Уважаемые коллеги, добрый день. Начинаем пресс-конференцию президента России Дмитрия Медведева. Пожалуйста, ваши вопросы. Russia Today, пожалуйста. Russia Today, please. Uh, Дмитрий Анатольевич, many scholars and leaders of uh, NATO countries have uh, called this uh, summit a historic one and a turning point in the relations between Russia and NATO. Do you agree with such an assessment? And does it mean that it has been possible to express uh, the viewpoint of Russia uh, correctly? Was it uh, assessed uh, uh, positively? How was it uh, received anyway? Well, you know, today my colleagues uh, found many words uh, to express uh, their view, which is not bad. I also use the term historic today, implying we have uh, traveled a long distance starting from some illusions which perhaps existed in the 90s towards the productive uh, interaction in the beginning of this decade. Subsequently, there were serious uh, disagreements, uh, different viewpoints expressed. Now we are bolstering our cooperation. Therefore, basically, I would agree that this is a very important stage of building on meaningful, full-fledged partnership relations between Russia and NATO. Incidentally, even in the declaration endorsed uh, regarding the outcomes uh, and the statement of the Secretary General, it uh, spells out our desire to develop strategic partnership, which is uh, not an incidental remark. It means we have overcome the difficulties of the recent past. Now, as regards specific uh, outcomes, they're all reflected in the documents. Still, I will mention a few of those. First, we have stated the fact that, indeed, the period of cooling relations and claims is over. Now, we are optimistically looking forward, and we are trying to develop relations between Russia and uh, NATO in all directions. There are key directions, though, which are important to us and which are important for the North Atlantic uh, Treaty Organizations of the countries making part of these organizations. That's uh, interaction in various fields, like countering terrorism as one of the serious, very complex uh, challenges uh, faced by the entire world. We have uh, endorsed the whole list of uh, threats before our countries, narco crimes, drugs crimes, uh, and uh, problems related to piracy, the spread of the weapons of mass destruction. These are all topics where virtually we don't have differences. I will recall the fact that even in the most difficult times, when after year 2008, after the Caucasian crisis, the relations between our countries have uh, been quite acute. Still, the interaction on the counter-terrorist track remained. This was my conscientious stance at the time. Then it was not easy to listen to each other. Still, we continued to cooperate in that area. And it's even more natural to do it today. With all challenges, we'll cooperate productively. We have achieved a lot there. One more important and uh, widely discussed topic, that's uh, the MD subject uh, here. It's quite evident that uh, uh, everything seems to be new, and the Europeans themselves and the NATO states don't have a, a complete understanding of what's going to happen there, what it will be looking like, how much it's going to cost. But everybody is clear that, uh, generally speaking, this MD system will only be useful when it's universal, when it's not just one component uh, helping uh, some countries uh, or covering uh, just uh, uh, different uh, regions. Uh, and uh, there was an interesting discussion. I will probably uh, talk about it later. And we have agreed that we'll continue this interaction further on. We discussed uh, cooperation concerning Afghanistan, too. This, perhaps, is another topic uh, which is extremely important to us, uh, the Russian Federation, not less important, of course, for uh, NATO, for the states uh, 
which are rendering assistance in ensuring security in NATO countries and other countries supporting this mission. Here again, everything is quite all right. Even in the difficult times, we didn't suspend this cooperation. We allowed this non-lethal transit, uh, and uh, we have allowed uh, the military transit too. And today we continue this discussion. We talked about various possibilities with regards to transit, including uh, return of uh, some cargoes through the territory of the Russian Federation. While talking about traditional topics of Russia-NATO relations, everything looks quite OK there, which does mean, though, that uh, we don't have some differences. There are some. Well, one of the most serious differences being our assessment of the events of year 2008, of what happened there in the August of 2008, uh, and uh, attitude towards uh, well-known geopolitical changes which occurred then, and emergence of two states, uh, for example, South and Ossetia and Abkhazia, we stated the fact that this subject should not be turned into a stumbling block. We will continue to discuss uh, this topic. We want to see to it that uh, these discussions be fruitful. It's only like that we can ensure uh, peace in the Caucasus and in the whole of Europe. And we are prepared to continue these discussions, even if we have our own stance and NATO countries uh, uh, would pursue their stance. There are other issues where we differ. To be honest with you, there are not too many. And second, we have agreed that such issues should not tear apart our relations. On the contrary, we should see to it uh, to find a way out uh, from these difficult situations, uh, to be able to listen to arguments of each side. Uh, taken together, I might as well say that uh, the summit which uh, has been held uh, here, uh, the uh, NATO-Russia summit, are a very important step in reinforcement of our relationship. And this is indeed a historic event, since any types of new ideas and new agreements are always part and parcel of the world history. Dmitry Anatolich, you just uh, mentioned uh, MD, and you just said that this discussion will continue. It's uh, well known, which you've mentioned on various occasions, that theoretically Russia is prepared. Will there be such a chance uh, for Russia to participate uh, in this system, but only on equal footing? And your statement on uh, this forum uh, was uh, uh, very much expected. What did you tell them? Uh, and uh, what's the Russian proposal today? And what was their reaction of your colleagues? Oh, indeed, it's a very important question. It was the centerpiece uh, of uh, my uh, statement, uh, and I dedicated it to this MD subject. It so happened that uh, over the past 10 years, uh, the world has been developed on the basis of uh, the nuclear deterrent. I will not uh, right now discuss whether it's uh, good or bad. Uh, there will be always different assessments. Uh, nobody likes uh, nuclear weapons, for one. On the other hand, it helped uh, uh, to preserve uh, peace in Europe for decades, but emergence of the ABM systems can change the balance. And this evidently doesn't serve the interests of Europe or uh, the world as a whole. And uh, you know, uh, we've uh, uh, been very cautious with regards uh, to this ABM system. And once uh, the previous uh, US administration proposed uh, to set up uh, the third uh, defense region. You remember the Russian Federation uh, response. It was very tough. Why? Whatever they told us at the time, we believed and we still believe that this idea, first and foremost, was aimed against uh, the Russian interests and uh, only to a lesser degree against the interests of the countries who are capable of uncontrolled uh, proliferation of uh, nuclear weapons or launches of missiles from their territories. Uh, and it's not very clear what kind of launches that might be. We have to pay tribute to the present administration of the US. They were courageous enough uh, to forego this idea of the third uh, 
defense region. The Russian Federation, in response, backed off uh, the idea of deployment of uh, well-known missiles and radars in the Kaliningrad region. I believe that diffused uh, the tension and allowed us to talk about uh, a BM not as an idea geared against uh, the interests of uh, one or several states, but rather of the idea of the uh, umbrella protection against uh, missile launches. But I will recall the fact that nuclear potential still remain. Therefore, when we talk about ABM, we need uh, to think about how the European MD will affect our nuclear potential. Our position is simple. If we do it together with regards to ABM, this ABM should not destroy the existing parity for known reasons if uh, in the result of ABM, the nuclear balance would be shifted in any direction that would uh, stem in arms race again, that would result in arms race. Therefore, the ABM idea might be constructive and uh, dangerous, on the other hand. Now talking about uh, European MD, as it was discussed today in NATO, I will be blunt with you. We need to sort it out uh, to understand what it's uh, all about. Uh, on top of that, the European countries uh, should uh, uh, sort it out. What's their position? And at the end of the day, what will be this idea of uh, European ABM looking like, especially after it will have been finalized by, let's say, year 2020? In turn, we need to find out uh, what our position will be. And naturally, we should be guided by the fact that our participation ought to be absolutely equal uh, and they will stress it, it can only be partner-like, no other participation, just uh, provided appearances were safe. Uh, no, that's no go. It's either going to be a full-fledged change of information, uh, being responsible for certain problems, or we don't take part at all. If we don't pay, take part at all, then for known reasons, we'll have to protect ourselves. Otherwise, precisely that's why the Russia has formulated a whole set of ideas how we can take part in the European ABM. These are indeed the principles of equality. In the first place, transparency, technological approach included, and responsibility for decision making. We have uh, put forward setting up the so-called uh, sectoral MD. This is a subject to be separately analyzed. Today, I don't insist on providing a prompt answer to us on this one. I understand with regards to sharing responsibility in the European ABM, various arguments could be put forward, various stances could be taken by different countries. Nevertheless, if you want to implement this idea, then we can see the reason for us to take part in this whole concept. And then we get a sense of responsibility invested upon ourselves, and we'll be ready for full-fledged cooperative interaction with our partners. We have agreed both um, with our partners in NATO, and uh, I have separately discussed this subject matter with the leaders of several European countries, France, Germany, uh, UK, President Obama, several times, to the effect that we'll further pursue dialogue on all issues related to European ABM. So the door is still open. The door is open for discussion. But uh, the outcome of this discussion should be understandable and acceptable to us. Therefore, we shall necessarily pursue this discussion further. Uh, President Medvedev, Ian Trainer from The Guardian. Um, President Obama, of course, has been speaking of resetting relations between America and Russia. And this meeting today is being seen as also a reset in relations between NATO and Russia. And you have been saying that you're very optimistic about this. Uh, could you tell us, please, what you think will happen to that reset if the American president is unable to get the START, the new START treaty ratified in Washington? Thank you. Um, that uh, would be uh, very unpleasant uh, because uh, the work of uh, many people aimed at uh, general relaxation of tension on uh, resetting relations both uh, between Russia and U.S. and also 
between Russia and NATO, all of that would be in vain. In this case, I hope that legislators of the United States of America would uh, demonstrate a responsible approach. On top of that, the START treaty is in of interest both uh, to the Russian Federation, not to a lesser degree it's of interest to the United States of America, not to a lesser degree it's of interest to all other countries. I will not hide it from you. I've uh, just uh, 40 minutes ago talked about it with the President Obama. He told me that he intends to vigorously work uh, on it with the Congress, and I hope that this work will be crowned with success. If we fail to move this question forward, for known reasons, the world will not become safer in the end. But at the end of the day, I'm sure that common sense will prevail and uh, the relevant decisions will be adopted. We will act symmetrically to what will occur in the United States of America. And from day one, I have been told, telling President Obama that uh, the Russian parliament will act in accordance with the decisions which will have been adopted by the U.S. Congress because this is our common interest and we are interested in making this uh, process of ratification symmetrical with regards uh, to the START Treaty. <coughs> Stephen Fiddler from the uh, Wall Street Journal. Um, does the agreement today uh, that you've signed with NATO mean that Russians now trust NATO? Um, and the fact that um, you've signed on to a cooperation agreement on uh, missile defense uh, with NATO, um, does that signify that you share the concerns of some Western countries about the threat posed by Iran's missile and nuclear programs? I have uh, mentioned the fact that uh, the Council and uh, the NATO summit is a historic event because very important decisions were adopted there, first and foremost uh, in the interest of NATO itself, NATO itself, that's endorsement of the strategic concept of NATO, is a very important component of the development of the North Atlantic Alliance. I will not hide it from you. We have uh, quite attentively studied the uh, approaches taken for this uh, strategic concept. There were some elements uh, uh, which uh, puzzled us a little bit, surprised us. Then uh, there were also optimistic uh, components to us. Uh, ultimately, certainly this is an internal question to NATO, but we cannot uh, be impartial there. And the final version of the concept, uh, I believe, reflects the desire of the NATO states to build constructive relations with the Russian Federation, to move in direction of full-fledged partnership there, which is good. Therefore, we believe that um, Regarding development of the relations with NATO, we have uh, put this question forward. Even if we have differences uh, and uh, differences ahead of us, too. Now, while talking about assessment of challenges and threats existing today, we have a survey there which lists uh, the threats which potentially are there, including the threats of uh, unauthorized uh, proliferation of uh, mass destruction uh, weapons. They are spreading the world, uh, threats of the missile launches. And we have been prepared very attentively to work uh, with NATO in this direction, too. And we'll do so, including uh, with regards uh, to the nuclear programs of uh, several countries. Not so long ago, I had a meeting with the president of Iran we discussed uh, bilateral Russia-Iran relations, which of late have not been very easy for uh, known reasons. But uh, I mentioned uh, it once again while talking with, with my colleague that Iran must exercise goodwill with understanding of the fact that Iran is a sovereign, independent state with a uh, long history 
and desire to develop uh, its own uh, strength and economy, Iran, having a right for peaceful use of the atom should uh, prove to everybody that uh, Iran's programs of the development of atomic industry is peaceful and that Iran is uh, ready to cooperate with uh, international structures, uh, first and foremost with IAEA. Therefore, assessing various problems, naturally, we'll do so uh, along the lines I've mentioned uh, here uh, with the NATO countries. We'll most attentively take a look at the development of the various programs existing in other countries. Uh, we're not uh, impartial to uh, who is developing and how, how the current uh, nuclear potential looks in the world, who is an actor of the nuclear club and who uh, seeks to be part of that club, who would like uh, uh, to legitimize themselves as being part of this uh, club, uh, saying that uh, they are in ownership of the weapons of this uh, nature or those who hide that. And there are other tracks we'll pursue to cooperate in this area. Dmitry Anatolyevich, relations between NATO and Russia have uh, never been very smooth, so to say, from uh, uh, confrontation to very uh, cautious partnership sometimes. Today, judging by your statement, uh, you want to uh, make peace. Uh, what are the specific uh, outcomes that you would like to achieve after this uh, new uh, round of uh, friendship talks? Well, I wouldn't like uh, uh, to uh, regard this as just a round of talks uh, which would uh, end in confrontation. Uh, that would be bad for uh, uh, Russia and NATO. For known reasons, we are so interlinked and closely connected that any change of positions of any side will immediately tell on the position of the other side. I've just mentioned the fact that, let's say, if we fail to agree on MD, here that uh, ultimately in 10 days, 10 years uh, or earlier, that could be a new arms race uh, coming our way. Uh, and uh, we uh, believe so, and we think that uh, NATO believes so as well. Talking about the current status of affairs, they are not bad. We have uh, moved forward. We are talking about partnership. Today, in the remarks of my colleagues, various assessments were expressed, but generally speaking, all of them said that it's necessary to develop partnership relationship, to develop um, alliance. People were even talking about this uh, things like uh, union. That's, of course, is emotional, not on paper, but that reflects the uh, tenor of discussion. If there are uh, differences and contradictions, what we expect from this? We expect normal, full-fledged relations with uh, NATO countries. We expect that uh, in the outcome of these relations, we'll have uh, conditions whereby quiet development of our state will be possible and uh, we don't want to waste money on arms race. We've done that before, and the uh, repercussions were uh, not very good for the Soviet Union, too, as you know. Therefore, we take interest uh, in seeing to it that our defense strategy be predictable, uh, bearing in mind how we uh, build our relations with NATO as a major military pol political Block. And if these uh, relations are predictable, transparent, understandable to us, if we can understand uh, where we cooperate and where we are jointly tackling the problems like uh, this European ABM, it will be easier for us to build our economic strategy too. In what uh, manner? Therefore, uh, the relations between NATO and Russia, these relations have an effect on the quality of life of uh, Russian citizens uh, at the end of the day. Also, on the quality of life of uh, Europeans, for that matter, a lot has been uh, said now while discussing the question of how much uh, will it cost with regards uh, to uh, European ABM in Europe. Crisis still with us. Nobody has excessive money to spare, and we are talking big money here. But uh, while we agree on that, uh, uh, while we do that, uh, and uh, NATO has decided to do it, we are thinking about what we should uh, know, what uh, will be uh, the cost of it. Therefore, uh, the good relations between uh, NATO and uh, Russian Federation has a, a direct bearing to the tempos of economic development of our countries. We should not be distracted by setting up excessive uh, defensive programs. We should think about future. We should think about those people 
who are building new life today, about young generation, about educational programs. Uh, and uh, we should think about uh, uh, helping uh, least developed countries, uh, Africa. All that can be done if we understand uh, uh, what will be the cost of the defensive programs. Uh, this is why I believe that development of relations with NATO will affect uh, the good climate uh, in the world uh, and uh, the well-being of uh, uh, very many people living there. Jean-Jacques Mével, Le Figaro. Une question sur l'Afghanistan, Monsieur le Président. Quels sont les intérêts concrets que la Russie défend en promettant... Uh, now, as regards to the uh, cooperation with uh, Afghanistan, uh, and uh, the uh, plan to withdraw from Afghanistan with troops by year 2014. Do you think it's a realistic plan? Realist. I have said already, we've been working actively with the NATO countries on Afghanistan. We have our own experience, dramatic experience, of uh, presence in that country, and uh, uh, we are not impartial. Uh, to what Afghanistan will look like. We want it to be a free, modern, efficient, uh, independent state where the historic traditions uh, of Afghanistan will be respected, but uh, which will be speaking the same language with the international community. I've just mentioned that uh, while talking uh, with uh, President uh, Hamid Karzai, I told him that we'll continue to help Afghanistan uh, in all directions. We've been doing so. Uh, in a serious way. We're doing it bilaterally and multilaterally, helping uh, ISAF. Uh, what we discussed today, we certainly discussed the fact that we'll continue cooperation in transit, which is an important uh, direction of interaction. Everybody appreciates that. We are also prepared uh, to deal with uh, civil and military transit uh, on non-lethal uh, equipment uh, and hardware. We have agreed uh, and made new agreements on the subsequent uh, withdrawal of such hardware of Afghanistan to the territory of third countries. And we'll continue cooperation in uh, uh, countering uh, drugs trafficking, which is a very important subject for the Russian Federation, because uh, regrettably so, all heroin uh, and opiates uh, produced in uh, Afghanistan, uh, first and foremost, uh, find its way to our territory, then via our territory to Europe. Therefore, believe uh, we didn't pay enough attention to it earlier. We've started to pay more attention to it. We've been working it. Uh, we are involved in the joint operations uh, with the NATO states. Basically, we are satisfied with the outcomes of these operations. We'd like uh, to further coordinate our activities there, naturally, jointly with the Afghani government. And so far, so good. And we'll continue to help Afghanistan in uh, protecting their national interests, including bilateral assistance. We are prepared uh, to supply various equipment and weapons. If necessary, we've been doing so. And we are prepared to work along the lines of economic uh, interaction. And I hope that uh, this track of cooperation uh, will be uh, especially bolstered uh, during the upcoming visit of the President of Afghanistan to the Russian Federation next year. Therefore, virtually uh, all around uh, the movement has been good uh, and a good in understanding with NATO countries has been achieved. We have achieved a lot, I believe, over the past years in this area. And last thing, regarding year 2011 and further on, uh, well, it's difficult for me to uh, assess uh, if uh, these plans are realistic. I believe that the current situation in Afghanistan, let me say, is far from uh, being quiet, uh, even if uh, the work of the president of Afghanistan, the government, has been uh, quite uh, substantial. There is a polarity of uh, Afghan society. It's quite high. The terrorist threat uh, originating from Afghanistan is also high. Therefore, whether it's feasible in the forthcoming future, I don't know. I have some doubts there. But at the end of the day, these decisions uh, will have to be made by those who have uh, once uh, decided to help Afghanistan. We'd like to see to it that uh, in the wake of uh, the presence of the corresponding troops, Afghanistan uh, being positioned to develop independently as an efficient state, will work in the direction ourselves too. Distinguished colleagues, I think it would be fair if the last question at the press conference uh, be asked by mass media of Portugal. Martins, Radio Portuguesa. 
Eu que gostava de fazer a, a minha pergunta em português. Suponho que tem. So this meeting and uh, is a historic meeting that uh, marks a new step in the relations that in the relations that were not easy always between the Russian Federation and the. Uh, the, the and NATO in the new framework and the, within the new strategic concept uh, uh, when we power when we speak about partnerships and management of risks and threats is it can we think that one day the Russian Federation will be part of an a an Atlantic alliance which is not the same as in the past and as you said uh, is closer and closer uh, to uh, Western countries uh, with a new spirit and a new understanding uh, where some people talk and uh, some people listen. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, First of all, I'd like to thank the Portuguese presidency for excellent conditions. I have uh, told about this, uh, I told this to the Prime Minister of Portugal. Uh, the atmosphere and the situation is quite democratic. It's quite open and overt without any problems in communication. Everything that we wanted to tell each other but uh, used to be afraid to do so has been said today in which instills optimism as far as I can see it. And at the same time, uh, everything has been rather constructive, quite constructive as far as future is concerned. Well, future is an indefinite thing. At present, I can see no circumstances in which Russia could join the uh, North Atlantic Treaty Organization. But the North Atlantic Treaty Organization changes. And if NATO changes that crucially and dramatically that there appears there arises a question about our closer cooperation with this organization. I believe it will be a topic open for debate. If there is goodwill and desire of our partners, we are ready to discuss such issues. As of today, our relations have become much closer and much more transparent and predictable, which suggests a thought that the potential of our relations has not been exhausted by no means. And I hope that the rapprochement in our approaches uh, on all the issues will continue. And after this summit, I'm more upbeat than I used to be before. Thank you very much, colleagues.